Because. See, it's it 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 is yours now, Greg. It, uh-huh. It's it's Terry's. It's it's everyone's, and I, I mean that sincerely. I mean, yeah, I, I. It's lovely when you say that, and thank you for that. And and I, I tell you, it actually makes up for the, you know, all the dinners I've missed and <laughs> everything I've missed, <laughs> which is great. But but look, hey, people have had a harder life than me, a lot harder life than me, and I and I haven't. You know, I haven't been chained in some cellar somewhere. You know, I I, I do okay. But it really is your idea. And when it becomes your idea, and then you can make it someone else's idea. Yes? Yeah, absolutely, yes. When you embrace it and say, you know what, Ukada is mine. And then once you accept it and the responsibility of that to, to be a steward and help correct things, and then you share that so that other people say the same thing. Where they say, Ukada is mine. Ukada is ours. Yes. Then that is the, the, the change. And uh, no, I really appreciate what you say. Thanks. I, I agree. Well, I'll tell you, just so you'll know, um, I'm divorced now six years over making this move. And also, I have no place to live. I'm living in a condominium that's been foreclosed on right now, basically challenging the system to come after me. And... Um, I, I, I've I literally uh, known that the only way that we're going to do this is to stand our ground. And there are, there's a few of us men and women around this world now that just need a little bit of encouragement to realize that uh, the world's power is an illusion. You've said several times that the fear of the end of the world is the fear of the end of their world. You can see it all around us. Their world is falling apart. They cannot possibly sustain a debt system this much any longer um, it, this system cannot restart, but people I know around me that are trying to restart it right now have no idea that that there's nobody has any credit left to be able to start this financial system up and running again. And and the young people have no options; they have no hope. Um, we really, I mean, even my children, who I don't see all the time, I have two still in high school, that um, that I, I've shared these things with them, and they're starting to see a conundrum with what they're taught in church with what I show them historically provable. So I'll say this, the Gnostic teachings of absolutely knowing things and having the foundation of knowledge under, underpinning everything we do is the most important thing that we can do. That, that to have um, esoteric philosophies without the depths of knowledge and history to back it up uh, is, is empty. And I would imagine that that's why the um, powers that be sought out to destroy all the libraries in Alexandria and Athens and Antioch and all the other records of all the histories of the world, and all of our advances in sciences that you're bringing back for us. Um, I, I, it has to come back to this. And I, again, um, I, even on the 432 work that Brian has worked on is profound. I, I've just literally undone a major fraudulent teacher in the Patriot community or I'm going to, I'm, well, he's being undone by his own writings and his own fraud, and by promoting this 528, which is 444 hertz, and I'm a, so I'm a composer, and I've been, I, for years, I've been waiting to finish my music until it, till it came to something I actually felt right, and as soon as I found that Brian was right, it is 432 hertz, verified it with some ancient Tibetan chants that I had, and also some other work, even Glenn Miller was recorded in 432, and I started yeah. doing started working my music in the 432, all of a sudden my music's alive and now I can record it. It's just Well, Greg, you look after up. yourself. It's, I, I really appreciate it. And, and look, thank you. Um, you know, look after yourself. It's not easy. It's not, it's, it isn't an easy process, oh. particularly when people roll their eyes when, oh, here we go, they're going to talk about this UK thing again. But look, yeah. uh, each to their own. We're, we're, things are moving forward. And again, thank you for sharing in your kind words, Greg. Good on you. Thank you very much, Frank, tonight. Thank you, Greg. Thank you for all you're doing out there as well and getting your voice out on the airways and uh, being heard as well. Thank you for everything you're doing. And uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank and you very thank much. You for your, yep, you're welcome. Thanks for uh, your words. Okay, uh, let's go to another question on the uh, chat group here, Frank. Um, the union ID card shows it expires 12-21-2012. Is this yep. an actual expiration date or just an example? Uh, well, 
is an example and it doesn't have to be that date. Uh, it was originally designed a year ago and it was at that point used as a deliberate example but I am kind of over the 2112-2012 because it's, it's promoted now through so many different ways that it kind of detracts from the legitimacy of what the identification represents. So I would say a, a fair date for an expiry of any type of identification is probably um, four, six years and probably good for it not to be that date. Okay? Very good. Thank you, Frank. So those adjustments will be made as the requests come in and as the workbench gets open to be able to do those, right? Yep. Okay. All right, next question. If the government finally disclose and admit alien involvement with humanity, how will this be dealt with in the Acadia system? Great question. I really suggest that you read The Journey of UCA on Ucadia.com, The Journey of Self on Ucadia.com, and that you look to the references that are made in the codes of law on any one of the union sites, Globe Union, America's Union, Asia Union, whatever you like, and you will see that there is recognition there is recognition that life isn't merely the life of Homo sapien, that all higher order life deserves respect, and even non-carbon higher order life de deserves respect. So the answers are there, and I really encourage the, the, the person to ask that question to go and have a look. And if you're not happy with the approach, then let us know. But if you are, then that's great. All right. That's a good question. Thank you, Frank. All right, next question we have. Uh, someone over uh, your way, Frank. I'm getting married in Australia later this year. Should I sign all documents with BC prior to my signature, or should I construct a signature that identifies me as separate to their corporate fiction? Yeah, look, I think that's a, a good question either way. You see, the problem of marriage is that they are taking your good intent and corrupting it. So they kind of use your knowledge against you, which is really upsetting. The VC is one method, uh, and the other is the other method you said in terms of signature. I leave it up to you. But you, you, you need to know that when you are married in their system and effectively given a license, which is unbelievable, a license... Yeah, that's what they're doing, a marriage license, uh, then they're going to create a new bond, a new financial instrument that's against you, and you will not see the benefits and the fruits of those. So it's your choice. Absolutely, yes. In Eucadia, we don't use the word marriage. We use the word matrimony, which is actually referred to in the ceremony of marriage because matrimony is not a Roman cult sacrament, whereas marriage is a celebration of the founding of the Holy See, which is a joint business venture between the Lombardy princely pagan families that worship Saturnia, Satan, and the Venetian occult families that worshipped Sabaoth and, uh, and other uh, demonic forces. So when that was uh, celebrated, there was a ceremony where they would send out off St. Mark's Square in what they call a book hunter, uh, or a bull centaur, a beautiful centaur, and they would throw the ring of the Pope into the sea and pronounce the wedding relationship. So Mari means sea, and ago means the masters. So Mari ago, marriage, is the uh, masters of the sea. It's the, it's the celebration of that joint venture. That's why we don't 
recognize marriage, we recognize matrimony. Okay? Yes, thank you for explaining that, Frank. I, I, I believe that's really an important part of, uh, of moving through those type of processes correctly um, as we uh, learn more truth and break free of uh, certain slavery-type system ceremonies, so to speak. Next question we have is uh, Ellen. Is Ellen in hoax or not? Yeah. That's a good. That's a really good question. Um, mm -hmm. Well, if if Ellen ends up being a ginormous uh, bullet or planetary body, moon body, as opposed to a, to a comet, then the way I view it is uh, if. If there's a chance that I'm going to die tomorrow, like I, I, the way I live my life, people ask me, this is the way, a best way I answer it. People say to me, Frank, are you scared that they'll come and, and, and kill you? And I say, no, I'm not scared. I, I, not that I'm not mindful of it, but I can't control that. I, I can't control the moment I die. All I can do is live my life and do the best I can in what I'm doing. And if there's some crazy person that wants to come and do that, then ultimately I can't stop it. So the same thing applies to, to Ellen. Ellen. Ellen's coming. Is it a large body or a small body? Look, I'm not going to entertain it because is it going to affect my life? No, it's not going to affect my life. I'm going to live my life every day the best I can. What is important is whether it be Ellen or another terrorist attack or Al-Qaeda or an earthquake, or a tornado, or whatever it is, they have used fear against us over and over and over and over again. And come on, it's time, isn't it? Time to stop using that. I mean, what do we get out of six months of fear? What do we really get? The world's going to end, the world's going to end, the world's going to end, the world's going to end. Are we actually... Um, learning more things? Are we spending time with our family? Or are we obsessed in proving our fear is founded? And I think what you'll find with a lot of people when it comes to an Ellenon or uh, an earthquake or harp, you know, whether it has a, a scarec of truth or not, is that they spend a huge amount of time trying to prove the truth of it rather than getting on with life. And how many people have actually focused on the positive alternative in the past versus proving the system is corrupt. And of course, I don't want you to focus on the positive. It's why the conspiracy industry is so important to them. They want you to be going down rabbit holes. They want you to be looking. So they give you a little bit of truth with a whole lot of fiction because they want intelligent people to, above all, not come together and not focus on fixing the problem. They want you to be permanently focusing on, on, the, uh, on the issues at hand. And that's the, my issue with Ellen. I Quite frankly, I don't care whether it's big or small. Um, it really is irrelevant. It's just another fear. Personally, I, I think it's, it's overrated. But that's my personal opinion. But either way, let's stop being obsessed in fear. I'm sick of it. Right, and it becomes a distraction. You're no good to anyone, yourself, or or anyone around you, or being trying to be part of the solution instead of part of the problem. That's right. So it's a, it's a complete distraction. Uh, all right. Next question. Uh, this is a good question too. Why why can't baptism? Why is it not possible for the baptism uh, to be annulled? Since it's based on fraud, why can it not be annulled? Uh, that is an excellent, excellent question. <clears throat> it cannot be annulled because in their system they do not recognize that baptism... Well, firstly, they refuse to, to admit that baptism is a fraud. 
that they regard baptism as the foundation stone 